There are three basic ways to propagate strawberries, to get more strawberry plants from a single mother plant, but one clearly stands above the other two. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, a master gardener who discusses everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today, let's talk about the best way to propagate strawberries. <music> This is one of the beds where I'm growing strawberries, and I'm right now in the process of greatly expanding the number of strawberry plants that I have, because it's so easy. It's so easy that you'll be able to have success with it your very first time you try it. Now, there's three basic ways to propagate strawberries. The first is from seed. You can actually save a strawberry, and it's very unique in that it has the seeds on the outside. You could save those seeds, plant them, and grow strawberry plants. There's a couple problems with using that as a primary propagation method, though. It takes a long time for those seeds to grow, and there's no guarantee that the plant that results is going to be the kind of plant that you want because strawberries have so many cultivars that have been developed over the years that with the crossbreeding, we have the strawberries that we know and love and plant in our garden. They've become hybrids, and when you plant a seed of a hybrid, there's no guarantee that you're going to get the same mother plant. So you can do that, but growing strawberries from seeds really isn't a recommended method. You can also divide strawberries. When strawberries get older, they'll start sending up multiple crowns from the center of the plant. And if you're very careful, you can divide those crowns and plant them individually, greatly expanding the number of strawberries that you have. But it's very easy to damage the crown in the process. And when you replant a crown, getting it at the right height above the soil, can also be kind of difficult. So it can be done, but it requires some finesse. By far the easiest way to propagate strawberries and the way to get the most strawberries is to take those runners and put them into new pots. That's what I'm doing right here. This strawberry plant is sending out runners and I'm training the runners into these little pots. When they root, I'll be able to put these anywhere in my garden, expanding not only the number of strawberries, but the number of locations where I'm growing strawberries. Runners are the natural way that strawberries propagate themselves. You'll have a mother plant, and it'll send out a runner, and then a plant will develop and root along that runner, and then the runner will continue on. And it does this in all different directions, sending out runners that will root and eventually fill in a complete garden bed with strawberry plants. Growing more strawberry plants from the runners is the preferred method by almost all gardeners. And if you buy strawberry plants at a nursery or online, it's almost guaranteed that this is the method that was used. Now, I'll show you in just a little bit how I do it, but let me explain why this is the preferred method. First, I already told you that the seeds might not give you the exact plant you're after. And these plants have been developed over a long period of time to give you the color and the size and the taste and when they're harvest during different times of year. Well, to make sure that those traits are continued in future generations, you need a genetic copy. And that's what the runners provide. Each of the runners is a horizontal stem called a stolon that is identical to the mother plant. So when that stolon touches the soil at one of those nodes where the leaves will develop, well, on that same node are adventitious roots. That means that they will grow into the soil and create a whole new plant. And that plant, because it's connected, attached, and essentially part of the mother plant, well, it's genetically identical. So the only way to make sure when you're growing a particular variety of strawberry to get more of that same strawberry is to either divide at the crowns 
or in a much easier manner, use the runners. These are strawberry plants that I just planted this year from bare root crowns. They're growing pretty well, but they're spending most of their energy in developing leaves and a root system. And very soon I'll be getting flowers and fruit. This one plant has started to send out a single runner. I planted these strawberries a year ago. They're much more established. They have flowers. I've already harvested some fruit. And because they're older plants, they're sending out a lot more runners. This plant right here has already sent out 12 runners that I've started to pot up. First year strawberry plants should be given the opportunity to grow big and strong and maybe provide a little bit of fruit. So I'm actually going to prune off that single runner so that the plants can grow. But in later years, as the plants get more mature, that's when they'll start sending out the multiple runners. Now, I want more strawberry plants because I'm expanding my garden, I'm building new beds, and I need more strawberries. That's why I'm allowing these older plants to send out so many runners and why I'm potting up so many new strawberry plants. If you're more focused on the fruit and getting a very large quantity, then you might want to prune off a lot of these runners because it takes a lot of plant energy to propagate itself. By pruning off the runners, the plant will be more focused on developing new flowers and new fruit. You can get a balance, and that's what I'm doing in this bed. I'm harvesting some fruit and allowing most of the runners to grow. But whether you choose to let them grow or prune and how many from each plant is completely up to you. The more runners you prune off, the bigger the plant will get. Chances are the more fruit you'll get too. When I decide that I want to pot up some of my strawberries, the first thing I do is make some staples because we're going to need to hold the plants to the soil. And this is 14 gauge wire. It's fencing wire. This is aluminum. It's very easy to work with. It's not going to corrode in my soil. So I cut a piece and just make a little staple like this. And then I take my pots and fill them with potting soil, firming down a little bit. I like to use moist potting soil, but it's really not critical at this stage to make sure that the soil is moist. I'll be wetting it after I put the strawberries in place. Let's go ahead and start with this runner. It's really nicely developed. The leaves are growing well. There's no roots developing yet, but these cells, the adventitious cells, will actually get the roots going in no time whatsoever. And then I just take my staple and press it on top of the runner so that the plant is pressed into the soil. And that's all there is to it. It's easy when you start with an individual runner, but for one that's a little older, you might find that if you give it a little tug, it's actually already started to root. You can still propagate these plants. The tip is also ready, but I'm going to start closer to the plant and dig down. I don't want to pull up this plant because I could damage the roots, so I'm going to dig up the plant to get to the roots, some really nice development. And then I'll go ahead and put it into my pot. Make sure that those roots are completely covered with soil. And those roots should be enough to hold it in place, but I'm going to go ahead and place one of my staples just to hold it down. And then I'll come back with this other tip and I'll go ahead and pot it up as well using the same method. Staple runner plant. 
And now I've gotten two future plants from this same runner, and the tip will continue to grow. I'll water the pots as I put the plants in place, and I want to be sure to keep the soil moist while these strawberries begin to root. So I'll come back a couple times a day in my hot summer conditions just to make sure that these pots are doing well and that the soil stays moist. And this is exactly what I did for these 12 plants that are all coming off of this main mother plant. Now your options aren't only to prune off the runners or to pot them up. You can also use runners to expand the number of plants within your individual bed. This mother plant is sending out a runner and I could easily pot these up, but I have a corner here where I could use some more plants. So I'll go ahead and move away the mulch so that I'm exposing the soil underneath. That'll give an opportunity for the roots to grow. And then I'll use one of my staples to hold the plant to the soil. And I'll do the same with this other part of the runner as well, putting the node against the soil and putting a staple in place. And now I'll have a plant here and I'll have a plant here. And this runner will continue to grow. I think I'm gonna be taking out this vetch plant soon. So all this area is freed up. I can go ahead and even make a 90 degree turn with this tip. And when it gets a little bit bigger, I'll use a staple and start a new plant right here. The other end of the bed is already filled in with plants, but it's still sending out runners to the point that they're already starting to grow over the edge. But I see that as an opportunity. I'll go ahead and pot up some of these runners. I may be limited by the number of pots that I can actually put in this space. So I'm guessing I might need to trim back some of these runners, but I do want to try to grow as many as possible. It won't take long for roots to develop once those nodes are touching the soil. But I'll give these pots about two to three weeks for the roots to fully develop. And then at that point, I can go ahead and cut each of the runners that separate these pots and replant them anywhere in the garden that I want. If I wait longer than that, it's completely natural for these runners to go ahead and dry and break off on their own. One of the reasons why I want to propagate so many of these plants from this bed is because I've been growing these plants for 20 years. Literally the same plants for 20 years. Two decades ago, I got some quinault strawberry plants and put them in my garden. And every year since, I've used this method to get me more plants. Every time I moved to a new house and started a new garden, I took some of my strawberry plants with me. So these are clones of clones of clones that go back 20 years for me. So there's no limitation. You can keep doing this. Strawberries grow best in USDA zones three through eight. So if you're in one of those zones, I highly recommend you consider growing strawberries. And if you have strawberries now or are seeking to grow more, this is an easy way to do it. The fruit I get and the time of harvest each year is identical now to the way it was 20 years ago. I just think that's incredible. To learn more about growing other plants in your garden, I highly recommend that you look at one of these other videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.